Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on Python sets and set theory. Before starting, I should note that the content of this video is contained on my blog post, which you can find a link to in the comments section below, as well as in the video description. So Python lists and tuples are standard Python data types that store values in a sequence. Python sets are yet another standard Python data type that also store values. The major difference, and you'll find this emphasized in this tutorial a lot, is that sets, unlike lists or tuples, cannot have multiple occurrences of the same value, and they also store unordered values. You'll see that this can actually be an advantage as well as a disadvantage in this tutorial. The first thing you have to know in like working with a set is how to initialize it. So you can initialize an empty set by using set. In this case, I assigned an empty set to the variable empty set. You can also initialize a set with values. Um, you just pass in a list to set. As you see here, I passed in this set to the variable data scientist. And I pass in this set to the variable data engineer. One thing you'll notice is that when I printed uh, data scientist and data engineer here. It's not in the order that I added them in. Um, and this is of course because sets are unordered. This next part is something that I want you guys to be careful with because sets containing values can also be initialized by using curly braces. Um, as you see here, I'm assigning this set over here to the variable data scientist and this set over here to the variable variable data engineer. Um, but it's really, really important to keep in mind that curly braces can only be used to initialize a set containing values. Um, if you're curious about why, um, if you use an empty uh, braces, that's how you'd initialize a dictionary and not a set. So just be careful. So after you initialize a set, you can add or remove values from a set. Um, first, what I did in this example over here is I set this uh, set to the variable graphic designer. And then from there, you can use the add method to add a value to a set. In this case, I added the string illustrator to the set graphic designer. It's really important to note that although a set itself is mutable, as in I can add or remove things from it, what you be careful what you're trying to add to a set, a set though. You can only add a value that is immutable, like a string or a tuple to a set. You'll find that you get a type error if you try to add a list to a set because a list itself is mutable. In other words, you can add or remove values from a list. If you find that you want to remove a value from a set, you can use the remove method. Uh, there's a couple options, I'll get to them in a bit. So in this case, I removed the string illustrator uh, from my set, and you see that after I remove it, illustrator is gone. The drawback of this is if you try to remove a value that is not in your set, you'll get a key error. However, if you find that in your code, you want to be able to remove, a, to try to remove a value even if it doesn't exist in your set. You find that the discard method might be a better choice for you, because if you try to remove something that isn't in your set, you're not going to get a key error. You can also use the pop method, which, if you're curious, you can just look at the code. The next thing I want to go over is that. Because a set is unordered, there are times when you want to be able to convert your set into something uh, ordered for whatever reason. You can always do that. In this case over here, you can use the sorted function. And what this does is it turns your set into a list, into a sorted list, that is. The most common use of a set, at least in my work, is to remove duplicates from a list. And the reason why I really like doing this is that sets are the fastest ways 
to remove a to remove duplicate values from a list. Okay, so this little example here, um, just times two approaches: one using a set to remove duplicates from a list, and one using a list comprehension to remove duplicates from a list. And what this does is it uses the time it library, which allows you to time your Python code. So in this case, when I ran this in a Jupyter notebook, um, I ran each approach uh, 10,000 times, and the code here outputs the overall time it took in seconds. As you see here, that the set approach was faster than the list comprehension approach. You may not find that that's that large of a difference, but it really can save you a lot of time if you have very large lists. So another really, really, really common thing you'll see with sets is if you want to use uh, standard math operations like union, intersection, difference, or symmetric difference. And what this image here is, is the red part of each Venn diagram is a resulting set of a given set operation. So if you want to find the values that are a member of in this case, set A, set B, or both, you use a union. If you want to find just the members of a set that are in common with another set, you use an intersection. If you want to use, um, if you want to find the members of set A that are not in set B, um, then you use a difference, and then so on. Um, I'm actually going to show you a little bit of code so that this can be a bit clearer because I'm not always the clearest myself. So the first thing, um, we're initializing two sets, data scientist and data engineer. So what this code here does is it finds all the unique values in two sets. So I have two sets here and this is a visualization. And the set returned from this union is visualized as a red part of the Venn diagram, essentially everything. So this middle part is the values they have in common. Um, this part outside here is the values unique to data scientist. And this part over here are the values unique to data engineer. And in this case, it just returns all of it. There are times though when you wanna get values of both sets, or you can have more than two sets if you really want to. In this case, I'm just looking for the values in common between data scientist and data engineer. As you see, um, the intersection can be visualized as the red part of the Venn diagram below. So the intersection of data scientist and data engineer is Python, SQL, and Git. Okay. Uh, don't worry about disjoint sets if it comes up. I have documentation here for you. Um, the other thing you might find very useful is finding the difference. So a difference in this case is a set of all values of data scientist that are not values of data engineer. So this example here may seem a bit trivial where I'm basically just wanting all, exam all values that are in data scientist but not data engineer. But you find that this is very useful if you have um, a list of names and you want to subtract another list of names from it. Um, it's, it's very useful. Um, symmetric difference is, again, another set operation where if you want to find the values of exactly one of the sets, but not both, sorry, the set of all values are values of exactly one of the sets, but not both. You can use a symmetric difference. And again, this is visualized in the Venn diagram below. And that's all I really wanted to cover in this tutorial. If you're from a computer science background, I would highly advise you to continue uh, and learn about membership tests. One of the main advantages of using sets in Python is they're highly optimized for membership tests. That's because they're implemented using hash maps. And the average case time complexity of membership tests and sets are O of 1, i.e. constant time, versus O of n, 
a linear time for lists. So the code below just shows a membership test using a list. This is something you're probably familiar with. Um, however, this is not as efficient as using a membership test for sets. They're just more efficient. So that's it. Um, again, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I have more about sets in this tutorial, in this blog post. That's it.